So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Uh, it's it's so wonderful to see you all. There was about uh, uh, forty registration, which is uh, which is amazing, which I'm really happy about. Um, so thank you for your interest for this webinar, this first webinar uh, that I'm doing on how to become an entrepreneur, uh, which is a very um, a dear topic uh, for me. And there, there is a lot of people that actually that come to me and talk to me that are wondering about, about that, about becoming an entrepreneur. So this is how the idea came to me to, to actually do a, do a webinar on that, uh, because maybe that's, uh, that's your case and that's maybe why you're here tonight. And I'm going to be then sharing my experience uh, as an entrepreneur myself and also as my experience of coaching entrepreneurs. And so this presentation is going to be organized around uh, different questions, which I thought that are the most common questions that uh, people would ask themselves <coughs> about entrepreneurship, uh, which would be uh, why switching for, from employment to entrepreneurship on the first place? You know, why make the switch? which are the, uh, the pros and cons to doing that. Uh, as, as well along the line, the second question would be, is that, is that the right thing for me? You know, is entrepreneurship right for me? Uh, the third question that I'm going to be focusing on would be um, how to find the right business idea, which is also a very common uh, question that I hear all the time. Uh, what do I do then? What exactly shall I, shall I be doing? Um, then how to do the switch, how to make the switch between employment and entrepreneurship. So how to prepare and plan this switch. And the final question will be how to become then a successful entrepreneur. It's not only about being an entrepreneur, but being a successful one, making a living out of it, right? So, uh, it's, so this is all based on, on experiences and examples uh, that uh, I have encountered also with, uh, with my experience. So just before diving in, a little word about, about myself, for those who don't know me, so I'm a certified coach, uh, Coach Clem, and I help entrepreneurs and individuals. And what I like to, uh, to be doing with people and the magic I bring to the table is to help them thrive professionally. And I work a lot with expats, English speakers, and French speakers, people in France, people in the UK, and also from all over the world, which is an amazing gift that I appreciate so much. Uh, I'm personally from France and I'm based in the UK at the moment, and so I'm still an expat myself. Um, the, the way I approach coaching uh, is, is that I, I can wear different hats when I work with my clients. So I can wear my coaching hats, typically working with clients on discovering their vocation, or working on their mindset, for example. Uh, I'm also a consultant at certain times, which is, for example, working on CV or working on a business plan with an entrepreneur. I'm going to be do, going more towards giving advice, you know, and we're going to be revising things in detail, for example. And I also love to offer meditation and visualization exercises to support the whole process for the person. This all deep coaching is a very deep work on yourself. Um, so, and that's really the, the meaning for me of personal development. So that helps with stress management, mental health issues. And I believe that this combination is really super powerful to help people thrive professionally. So, uh, so here you can find a, a little bit of, a, of the few um, main steps in, in my career. So initially I was a language teacher and I worked all over the globe which I absolutely loved, which helped me also with learning about new cultures and languages. This is why also I connect so well with expats. Um, and then I, I was a first of successful entrepreneur. I co-founded a bilingual nursery before becoming a coach and uh, created that uh, before creating also my coaching business. So I've been doing that for five years. So I also have uh, some experience uh, as an entrepreneur in a different type of context. Uh, so this is why I'm also excited to talk to you about, about entrepreneurship today. And all of this is being, of, of course, implemented in my, in my coaching practice. So, uh, so let's dive in and consider that first question. So why switching from employment to entrepreneurship? And I'd like to invite you first to reflect on, the, on these little pictures that I've got here. And I'm going to show, show it to you one by one. Uh, I would like you to tell me which picture you would pick that would describe best for you what, uh, what an entrepreneur is. 
So that would be picture number one. Um, so in a moment, you can just put in a chat box which picture you think describes entrepreneurship the best and what, what you see in that picture, you personally, what is your vision? That would be picture number two. Right. Picture number three. And the last picture, picture number four. So there's no right or wrong answer with this question. It's more, um, I'm interested to see what is, what is your vision? What, uh, what is your mindset also around, around this idea of entrepreneurship? So there's, there's no right or wrong. It's just interesting to see uh, which one describes, describes as best for you. So I've got a few twos and a number four. And if you can also put, um, if you put the number of the picture and also a few words in, in, in what you see, what is, what is this picture um, resonates for you. Okay, so I've got number two as entrepreneur and four for me as a writer. Okay, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, so in number, in number two, uh, we, we see this, this rocket. This is very often an image associated with entrepreneurship like this, um, this, this big sort of progression, this also this big effort, it needs a lot of power to, to move towards the sky and maybe reach, uh, reach the stars. Okay, we've got a number three as well. All right. Uh, number two and number three for colors and creativity. Okay, thank you. I think this is also very big for, as an entrepreneur. The creativity aspect is very at the core of, uh, of the entrepreneur vision for me as well. Number one or number three. Okay, interesting. Brilliant. So in the number one, we, we see as well this idea of this idea of progression with the line moving and the idea of navigating being the own uh, master of your own boat, which I think is, is interesting as an entrepreneur, uh, having having more freedom, possibly. Uh, yes, thank you, James, saying uh, steering the ship and deciding its path. Yes, I agree. Uh, I, I also see that in this in this first in this first picture. So. Uh, I, I can see that that there's maybe a, an emphasis in this picture on the on the freedom, on the ability to decide. Okay, then we've got number four because there's a lot of uh, trying. Uh, uh, we try things, we might fail sometimes, but we write a story again and we persevere. Um, so yes, this is also why I choose this this picture, this idea of uh, of trying and and going again and trial and error. Uh, and and this and you can see as as uh, as it was described in the chat, there's a lot of paper around around the person. So uh, the person is you know keeps on going, doesn't stop, just just keeps on persevering. Um, okay, we've got number three involves developing an idea into a into a business. Yes, and that's what I liked as well about this number three picture. Uh, you can see the idea in the middle, but you can see all the mechanism of the idea that sort of brings everything together makes the um makes the i makes the business work um as as a whole yes uh progress and transformation i think that was for number one and number three yes okay really good really good um so i think my my point with this little this little um brainstorming sort of ice breaking uh was to, to refer it as well to what you personally uh, see in, um, in, in entrepreneurship. It's always something, it's always something quite personal. And there's, there, is no, there is no right or wrong uh, in the sense that uh, there is always a way that you, we can see things positively and we can see things in, in, in the way that there is uh, possibilities and potential. Um, which is which is what you've we've, you've all um, expressed with in in different ways with different words, which is which is really interesting, um, and 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 some people might not be in an ability to embrace that sort of mindset, while uh, if they would be focusing too much on on all the problems that could arise and all the difficulties and all the risks, for example. So it's 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 important, I think, to to keep in mind and to have this mindset. 
um, of, of what drives you? Is it, is it more creativity? Is it more the ability of, of having the freedom? Is it more the perseverance and the, uh, the fact of trying again and, and perfecting in a way also little by little what, you, what you're going to be doing? Um, is, is it, you know, is, is what kind of flavor actually attracts you to entrepreneurship? Um, so from, from what I'm seeing in, in the chat, I could definitely see that you, you've got that, um, you've got that um, attraction, attraction to the concept. So that's brilliant. So, um, so before, before going more into, into detail on this idea of, of why switching to entrepreneurship, I think it's interesting to remember what, what work is, you know, because this is something we spend at least a third of our life we spend at work on average, if not more. Um, so for me, working and, and work is actually to take, to take actions, to, to be doing things um, and, and to get to get some momentum money, of course, in exchange of, of that. So ultimately, it's a way to contribute to the to the world. You know, I'm, I'm in the world. I am here and I'm and I want to do my share. You know, how, how, how can I be useful there in this in this world outside of me? Um, I, I can give my time. I can give my skills and I can get some some value back, some some money. So there's very, very for me, there's it's very central, this idea of exchange of value this this flow of value and if i don't feel useful if i don't feel like i'm giving uh and if i'm not receiving enough this is where usually there is a an ill balance there is a problem of balance uh when i don't want to get up in the morning or if there is too much that is asked of me which is usually um leading then later on to to burn out then it's you know, there's this, the, this balance in this, in this exchange of value, bringing and receiving value does not, does not work perfectly, does not work well. Um, so, so for me, it's really connected to the importance of uh, having, having meaning and purpose in, in the work that you do. Uh, and and, uh, and, and I really believe that every individual, every person has, has got a place to find, you know, in this world, has got a way to find, uh, to contribute. And, and that is very unique to, to every individual. So, so it doesn't mean that it's not possible to find that in employment and to find that in the, in the corporate world. I think that there are ways that work really great for, for, for people, which is, which is awesome. But there's also a lot of people that can be miserable, um, a lot of maybe organizations that are dysfunctional, a lot of the corporate world and the society that should be uh, improved. And this is not at the moment. So, um, so I, can, I can really relate also with people that, um, that, you know, that feel that their inner flame is down, that they're not, they not shining, they, they work too many hours and crazy deadlines and crazy requirements. Uh, and the system is not giving back enough or asking too much of them, uh, not having the recognition also is, is a big one. So, and, and for me, for me, it was also when I was looking for, uh, for an opportunity that also matches uh, or matched my, my skills, you know, and I realized that I couldn't find that out there, you know, I couldn't find something um, that, that really matched my skills, that I could get the money if I, I was worth uh, getting, I could get the security of employment. So I, I, turned, I turned to entrepreneurship in this, in this situation because I was like, okay, if I can't find that work out there, then I'm going to, I'm going to create it, you know, I will, I will make it myself. And this is, this is also one of the um, approaches that, that is, is a gift with entrepreneurship. Um, so if, if you relate to that, it's probably, probably a good, um, a good reason, a good why, you know, to switch to entrepreneurship. And I liked this, uh, this, um, this little visual, which is actually uh, something completely unrelated. It shows the, uh, the movement of people between countries in the world. But I just liked how, for me, it represents actually this, this flow of values between people at, at the society or even at the world scales, you know, that, uh, and it's actually, it's moving because it's moving from day to day. But it was just to, uh, just to illustrate that, uh, that idea for me of this, of this uh, flow of, uh, of value. Um, so, so if it's yes, again, if you relate to that, I think it can be great for, for you to consider switching to entrepreneurship 
um, and some people, you know, find finds enough balance of complement also with extra professional activities, finding a way a way to bring creativity or entertainment with volunteering as well. Um, and I think this is a big invitation to also consider yourself as as a whole and to consider that you are a complex person uh, and allowing yourself to be all that what you are and listen to your needs. So entrepreneurship can be a great way, but you can also find other solutions if that's not something that is possible for you. Um, but but yeah, just just be listen to all the parts of, uh, of yourself, of who you are. Um, so I wanted to mention also at this stage, the uh, Ikigai tool, which I think is, a, is an amazing uh, coaching tool that helps understanding uh, your vocation and uh, finding, finding your purpose. Um, so I'm going to be doing a webinar soon on, on this specific uh, topic on Ikigai. So I, I just wanted to, to give you a little outlook real, real quickly. So it's a Japanese tool that um, guides and helps people to discover themselves, become, become themselves more in order to grow and to thrive. And the idea is that um, what you love, what you're passionate about, what you are good at, what your mission is, what the world needs, your profession, vocation, and what you can be paid for are all connected. And uh, I've shown here, I've shown an example of actually of my Ikigai because I found that it was always uh, easier for me when I was learning about this tool initially to uh, have an example of uh, of actually some uh, uh, having it filled by someone. So you can see here what I've what I've written around around the the different sections. Um, and yes, it's 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 really I, I agree. There's a comment in the chat box saying that it's it's very brilliant. It's very inspiring, and I uh, I really recommend you to look for it. Uh, if you want to try to do it yourself on your own, it can be great to do it with a coach because, of course, the coach can be guiding you, asking you questions and unraveling things to, to you in, in a different light. So, um, so the way to do it is to start with the what you love. Do you start with what you love, what my passion is and what I'm good at? So you, you start with the um, uh, easy sort of um, uh, questions um, and then you can move to what the world needs what can be your mission? It doesn't have to be something very specific. It can be quite broad. Um, and, and then you can consider what can be your vocation. So a vocation can be something you can be doing, but not necessarily being paid for. Uh, maybe something that you've always wanted to be doing since you were little, like a, as a little child. Um, and, and then you, you also consider, you know, in, in also in a realis realistic way, what I could be paid for um, and uh, what profession I, I, I could or, or I, am, I am doing. Um, so yes, so again, I'll be doing a, I'll be doing a specific event on, on, on that tool. But if you're a little bit you know, lost or if you, if you wanted a bit, a bit of clarity, that, that can be something very, very useful at this, uh, at this stage, finding your, finding your purpose, finding your, your mission, your vocation. Um, so, so that was the, the, the part about why switching. So now we're going to move on to, is entrepreneurship right uh, for me? So before answering that question more in, in, in detail, I, I just wanted to have a little quick word on and definition of, around entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs. And I really love um, the, actually the, um, the French word entreprendre, which is literally to start something, to take action, action, um, which is the, um, for me, the basic meaning of, of entrepreneur. So it's, it's creating, it's acting, giving life to your idea. And this is why as well, I've, I've used a lot the, uh, the little icon of, uh, of a bulb, uh, of a bulb light, because, because I really think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's about that, giving, giving life to your idea, innovating, uh, closely related then to attrition. And, uh, and you, can, you can really get beyond limitation and possibilities when you connect to that to that creative space. So, uh, so it's it's a it's it's a really beautiful uh, definition to remember for me. Um, so classically, you can find different types of entrepreneurs uh, in out there in the world. You can find the builder types entrepreneurs, 
um, that so the builders are entrepreneurs are, are people that seek to create scalable business within a short time frame. So they're really looking at creating something that can grow and, and maybe creating more and more businesses and scalable. Uh, the opportunist entrepreneur is a little bit different. They are quite usually they're quite optimistic individual with the ability to pick out opportunities financially and they stay on board and exit at the right time so that they can make the most profit. So this is entrepreneur with investment um, sort of sort of modality. You've got the innovator type entrepreneur, which is a little bit different. They're usually more a lot more technical people that came up with this great idea or great product that never for ne never was created before. Um, and this individual work on what they love. They they come from that idea and then they found a business opportunity through that. But they were not necessarily looking at business at, at first, which is a little bit different. You've got the specialist type entrepreneur, and they have a very strong skill set um, uh, obtained through education or uh, apprenticeship. They have they have a very specific um, expertise, specific field of expertise, and they build their business through more through networking and referrals. So they have more of a slowly sort of growth than a builder entrepreneur, for example. So they have a little, a slightly different, different approach. Uh, and I wanted also to mention the different types of entrepreneurship. So we, we've got the small business type entrepreneurship, which is a, the most common. You've got the scalable startup uh, type of entrepreneurship, the large company. So the large company would be a branch of an actual company uh, creating a, a new branch of the company. So that's already, even if it's an entrepreneur, even if it's a startup, it's already a big company starting. And of course, social entrepreneurship that you've probably all heard about. So you can see that there can be a difference between a builder type entrepreneur working in a large company modality and a specialist entrepreneur, for example, in a social entrepreneurship modality. So there can be, there can be differences in, in the way they function. Um, so, so that's also something interesting to consider. Most people that I, I worked with um, are in a small, small business uh, type entrepreneurship or scalable, scalable or, or social entrepreneurship. Um, for, for large, large company, it's it's even not not even in the entrepreneurship sort of category anymore. It's already in the business, even very early on in, in creation. Um, so coming back to this uh, to this question, so uh, can everyone become an, an entrepreneur? So I believe so. I believe that everyone could grow the skills that are necessary to to become an entrepreneur and to be successful. Is it right for everyone? Mm, that might not be that might not be the case. Um, and for to know if it's right for you or or not, I would I would consider these uh, these little questions. So what is your inner strength? So what I mean by that is, what is your mindset? What is your personal development status? So as uh, Henri Ford said, if you believe you can or you can't, you are right. This is how important the mindset is. Um, in, and especially in entrepreneurship, this is, this is very true. It's a, it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you don't believe in yourself, if you have very low confidence, it might, it might mean that you would need to work on that before you start working as a, on, on your business plan and on your, and on your business project. This is, this is, I would say this is the foundation, the, your, your ability to, to believe in yourself, your ability to have this strong, uh, this strong mental fitness state is going to, to be a, a huge part, which is, I think most of the time, quite, uh, quite overlooked. Um, and but so important in, in the success of, of what you do. So for example, if you have very low confidence, I would say mm, maybe you would need to work on that first. Uh, and there are different things in coaching that can be very useful for that. If you start many things and never finish them or on the opposite, if you hang on to things too long and you can't let them go, or if your energy is, is very sort of very high and then very low and you alternating period of 200% energy and minus 200% energy, then I would say I would, I would look into 
maybe um, strengthening your your mental fitness first before uh, thinking of um, uh, of going for entrepreneurship. This uh, this would be my advice. It doesn't mean that it's uh, that it's impossible, and you cannot become an entrepreneur. But it might not be the right time yet. It might be that you would need to to work on that first, and maybe therapy, depending of 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 course of uh, of of what's happening for you. Uh, what is your availability? So that's the second point. Uh, time and availability, we know as, as entrepreneurs, of course, is, is very big. It depends on your family balance, maybe, and, and, and support. So the question again is not, is it, is it right for you? Because it might be, but is it the right period? Is it maybe, is it the right time to, to do that? Because it might take a lot of work, uh, even though it's energizing, it can be also intense and, and asking, asking for you uh, a bit of time. It's, it's never impossible. There are people doing things incredible, even with starting families, et cetera. And I could say it's 100% worth it to have that time and et cetera. But knowing also, knowing also yourself, knowing also your capacity, your availability can, can be something very important to consider to, to see if that is right for you to do at this point. And also knowing yourself in depth in terms of personality and stress, strength, you can do a SWOT analysis uh, that can be very useful at this stage, uh, looking at your, your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats, SWOT analysis. And a lot of skills can, can be learned, of course. You, uh, you can identify that also with this type of analysis, learning about which sort of areas you need to be working on, which sort of skills, soft skills or hard skills you need to be uh, upgrading. Um, and, and also knowing, knowing very deeply what are your strengths and weaknesses and what things that you can learn and things that you can't learn, uh, or you might not be, become amazing at it. Uh, there are some people that have a very large range of skills, uh, such as being able to be uh, very good technicians and scientists, as well as public speakers. But there are also some types of personalities that might be a bit more introvert, and, uh, and some people that might not become great, amazing uh, public speakers, for example. So for that, there's also solutions in the sense that you can also be looking at pattering with people. Uh, you can also be looking at having uh, support and colleagues and partners. I'm thinking, let's, let's go back to this example of a quite introvert entrepreneur. Why not partner with someone that maybe is a bit more of an, of an extrovert? So that you can uh, you can help you can be helped on the on the branding aspects of um, of the of of the business uh, if if that is not something that you might enjoy doing or that creates a lot of stress or you think that even if you work really hard you would cannot be as good as this person and and the business might might need a face might need a branding so that that could be a solution you know it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not never. It's never a problem, or it's never uh, something impossible. There are there are always solutions. So, uh, but I think that was a good example to illustrate as well uh, this this importance of of looking looking at what your personality is. So again, it starts with you. What is your situation? Where are you at right now? What are your priorities? Um, looking also at the mid term, long term short-term goals, short-term, mid-term, long-term goals on the right order, that's better. Uh, is this the best way forward? Is it more of a long-term goal for me? So that's, that's all very interesting to, to consider. And um, again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just depending on you and what, it, what could be the best, the best for you. How to find the right business idea. So most I think most people, the, the mistake that most people make is that they're looking outside of them to answer that question. So they focus, for example, on uh, what the market wants, uh, what the market needs, uh, what what is the what is the big the big thing that, that's going to be working next. You know, the big trend. And and again, if we go back to what I was saying initially, I think the opportunity as well of becoming an entrepreneur is also having this ability to be closer and closer to your purpose, to your, to your mission, to what makes you unique. Um, so I would say, if, if that's something uh, that you're looking for, you know, in the fulfillment aspect of things, I would say that it might be a lot better for you to consider your big why, 
So starting with your big why. So what, is, what does that mean? It means looking at what is your message? What is your gift? What is your unique way to contribute to the world? Uh, this unique gift that you have inside of you that no one else can do it like you, you know? And the Ikigai can be really useful in, into pointing out that direction uh, for you, especially the section about what, what the world needs, uh, which, is, which, which is really interesting because actually indirectly what you, what you can see that the world needs is usually sometimes that you can bring in, in, your, own, in your own unique way. And there are different ways that that could look like. There's no necessarily one, just one answer. So we can make it also sustainable with the market and realistic. So my, my advice on that would be to start, to start with the why, to start there. And then you can move on and work on the what, what am I doing? Who am I going to be working with? Uh, what is my product or what is my service? And then the how, so, oh, how can I do it now? Which is usually we, uh, we, we see a lot of people or I meet a lot of people uh, trying to work the other way around the stuff on the how, how can I, you know, how can I connect with people? How can I sell more products? And, and if you're, if you're looking for fulfillment, ultimately uh, you, the why is, is very important. So I would, um, I would start with that. So to, to work on that as well, there are some very powerful visualization exercises that you can do to also, so it's it's quite deep actually on on actually the meaning even of of your of your own life of everything that what happened in your life and how you can make sense of all that um, in, in that what also gives uh, this journey of yours you know this this very specific unique um, these unique things and the, the unique way that you can uh, you can contribute to the world. Another powerful question that you can ask yourself at this stage is also what what would be your big message you know if you would like to talk about something um, or spread something or share about something every day what would it be what are you you know so passionate about that you could be talking about every day not getting bored um, and and again that can look very different to one person to to another and and being quite different as well in the in in the specifics but that cannot that can point you in in this uh, in this direction and it's funny because naturally your skills and your experiences are connected in a way. And it's also a good way to make sense of everything that has happened to you, bad things as well as good things, um, which, is, which is, you know, it's all happened for you for, for a reason. And this is, this is also a good, a good, a good, um, a good occasion to, to give meaning to, to all that. Uh, and at this stage, usually at this stage, I don't know if that's your experience, that'll be great to hear about it uh, afterwards. There could be a lot of stress and fear and, you know, imposter syndrome, you know, like, okay, yes, I might want to be doing this, but who am I to, to do that? There are, you know, people that would be much better at doing that or have more experience, et cetera. So, uh, so what's great about focusing about on that, on that big why, on that big message is that actually focusing on the service Focusing on the help you provide, even this with with a product, uh, what you bring in this contribution, really helps to deal with that uh, with that stress and fear and imposter syndrome, which is uh, a limiting belief that we also mentioned in the in in your mental state. Um, so there are ways, of course, to to work to work around that. Um, so so I would I would advise on clarifying on that. And then you can work on the what. So the what is more practical, market study, business plan, building offers, building a website, setting smart goals. So that's more the business coaching uh, side of things. And then moving on the house, which is coordinating. And, and, and also it's, it's a mix of the business coaching and mindset sort of coaching. It's, I would call it like action coaching because you take action and you try things. Uh, you uh, you have this trial and error that we've uh, we've mentioned at the beginning. You work on the strategy uh, with accountability. It's more of a day to day. So how can I find solution? How how do I adapt to uh, to the market and etc. Uh, which I found I found really exciting. I don't know about you. <laughs> so how to prepare and and switch. So how to prepare and plan the switch. So there's always of course different different options. Uh, so there is the plan ahead sort of option. So 
So that could be a great way to save money, uh, save money ahead of time, start working on it as your free time. So maybe it, it can really be great that that option to to strengthen as well your confidence about something if you're if you're unsure. So you can stay in your job if you have a corporate job um, and try things small. So try, for example, having just a landing page instead of building a whole website, just a Facebook page, you know, trying, trying things small like that so you can see if you like it, if you can see if that, that can be working for, for you. Uh, I've, I had a client like that who is starting, is starting this way. And it was amazing to see that I actually just helped him also to confirm that that's what he wanted to do uh, and trying things out. Uh, and he well full time actually very quickly after after a few months because the, the growth was great as well so that he felt reassured uh, but also realized that if he wanted to go full power he had to be able to give more time and invest more time into into growing the business but that worked that worked really great as a transition uh, for for him and that you know that can take as as long as you as you need again I think. Also, we, we, we sort of forget sometimes about, about long-term plans. There are things that maybe we, we want to achieve in life and they might not be happening in, in, in the next months, but maybe they can happen on the longer, longer vision, which is, which is very important. Don't never forget about your big dreams and work towards them gradually. Uh, there could be option two, so gradual sort of switch. That could be, for example, finding a part-time job to reduce your expenses and working like half-time uh, half time on your business, half time uh, on the job. If you, if you can, that can be great. Um, that was that was um, that was an experience also with a with a client of mine um, that someone I worked with. She she and she she it enabled her as well to get uh, to to still have a CDE so that she could get on with a life project, buy a house, have you know get a mortgage with this uh, with this part time contract while building a business, building an offers, et cetera. So that, that, that can also be uh, a great option. Even if the, the part-time job that she got uh, was actually was working in a, uh, at first in a cafe and then in a shop. So it was not related to, to what the, the business that she was building. Uh, and it still worked for her to being able also to, st to sustain all other, other plans that she had in life at that time. And there is the option three, which would be go for it, go for it right now. Uh, so I would say always look at how you can secure your finances as well uh, before before you go full time. So you might have you might be um, getting getting money from your savings, so you can be having an employment benefits, for example, if you if you're based in France or taking a redundancy sort of option from your company with a with a little package. Um, so that was that was my case when I when I did my switch, I I sold my share of my previous business. So I had, I had some money and I did my coaching training. I started building my coaching uh, uh, business and, and really quickly so managed to, to set it up. I also have another client that retired early from a career in international banking. So she also had this uh, financial security and she now is working in building a portfolio on entrepreneurship and agritourism, sustainability, and also uh, offering microcredits for people that also want to create their business. Um, and uh, yeah, I have all the other, other experiences actually of, uh, of, of another client as well, who's created a wellness uh, therapy business and also took a redundancy offer from, uh, from a company so that she could do that switch and, and go full time with that, with that project. Uh, so again, what is, right, what is right for you in your situation and what, what is realistic? What, what, could you be, what could you be doing? And, and working with the coach as well can be can be quite quite interesting at this this point to help you find solutions so that you can uh, make things happen. Right, so we're moving on to our last question because before we go to Q and A, how to be then a successful entrepreneur. So uh, it's going to be a good a good way as well for me to sort of summarize uh, a lot of a lot of what I've mentioned. Um, so what I would suggest uh, first would be to define success for you and define it in depth, because there is also a big sense of uh, society sort of telling us what success should look like, what success should be. Uh, and so I would, I would take some time at this stage to look at what are your financial needs, what are your financial objectives, what is the life that you, you want, you know, what is your, your, your vision? 
your your desires, your priority. Define define success for you. Uh, letting go of what you what you think other people would want. Letting go of what you think you want. And and, and some visualization exercises again can be, can be great for that to focus on what's really inside of you. Uh, what's going to bring that fulfillment for you? Is it the creativity? Is it the helping others? Is it uh, the creation of, of machinery engineering. It, ca it can be, it can look very different as well as the practical aspect as well. Uh, and then I would uh, point again on these, uh, these three steps that I mentioned before. So I would, I would strongly um, consider what is my why, what is my big why, and also building on your inner strength. Uh, so I mentioned that before, um, mental fitness can really be greatly beneficial for that working on mindset which includes for entrepreneurs money mindset change management resilience so this is a big package of soft skills that is really key uh, because it's quite intense uh, employment is intense as well it's uh, it's not more or less or it's just different and um, and the more we're able to to surf I see it as a really as an ocean with big waves, you know, life, life is like that. And the more you're able to surf, surf the waves, like, like a surfer, you know, the more you can, you can thrive and also enjoy, uh, enjoy the ride, you know, whether you're an entrepreneur or not. Uh, so that would be creating and, and envisioning your missions, your vision, your values. This is, this is the, um, some, sometimes it is overlooked that step. So really, recommend that uh, you, you take enough time to build that really strongly. Uh, then work on your, uh, your what, so the second step, which is also your who, so what is your niche, what is your ideal client, how do you work on your market study, how do you implement that, that business plan. Uh, then you can move on to step three, the how, so that would be your strategy, your action plan, upgrading your skills, working on your skills. So this is continuous with experience. Of course, as an entrepreneur, you keep upgrading your skills, presentation skills, communication skills, marketing. And isn't that exciting? It's so exciting to be learning uh, all of those, all of those wonderful things. Um, so this would be my recommendations to, to make sure that you're, you're building on, you know, on a strong base and, uh, you know, going step at step by step going up uh, up the ladder like that. And I wanted to finish by, by this little inspiration and asking you this little, these little questions again, questioning maybe your, your mindset, uh, which, uh, which would be, so what if, what if everything is you, in your life was a gift or an opportunity? And what if in reality you couldn't fail, but what if you would only learn, grow, progress, whatever happens. And what if you're already all that? What if you're already an entrepreneur inside of you? And what if you could become that? So this was my, my little question. So uh, thank you for, for your attention at, uh, at this point. Uh, these are all my, my details. So you've got my, my email if you would like to contact me. Don't hesitate to follow me on LinkedIn and on Facebook. It would be, it would be wonderful. And uh, um, I'm also going to pop in the chat box a link to uh, book a free discovery session with me if you are interested to know more how we could collaborate more on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis. So thank you again for your attention. I'm going to stop the recording now.